Hi everyone and welcome. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Caver, Presbyterian Minister of three congregations in Eastern Ontario and thank you for joining us for our children's time. Today we have another story from Woodland Tales but it's not about an animal. It's about Tommy and his dirt bike. And Tommy wasn't an animal, as I said, but his family lived right next to the woodlands. So the story is called Tommy and his Dirt Bike. Tommy was a fairly young boy, somewhere between eight and 10 years old, old enough to be in school, but not so old that he understood time very well. One day, or even right and wrong for that matter. One day, Tommy was playing with a very close friend, Andy. Andy had just gotten a dirt bike and was proudly showing it off. All the gadgets he'd accumulated and put on the bike and all the things he was going to do with the bike. And he was so proud of that bike that he'd even named it Daredevil. Tommy loved Andy's bike and he asked if he could ride it. Well, Andy thought for a moment and then said no. It was his. It was new and he didn't want to take any chances with it. So he was going to be the only one riding it. Tommy said he understood. Maybe he did. But he was jealous of Andy and he wanted a dirt bike of his own. In fact, that's what he told his parents. He wanted a dirt bike of his own. Every day at supper time, he'd talk about what he was going to do when he got his dirt bike. Every morning at breakfast, he'd ask his parents if maybe they could go shopping sometime after school so he could get his own dirt bike and go riding with Andy. His parents told him no. They couldn't afford it at the moment. Now, if Tommy were willing to do some chores around the home, they would pay him and he could if he saved the money, he'd be able to eventually buy his own dirt bike. He just, oh, that would take too long. And he'd sigh and leave the table. Well, that went on for quite a while. Every time Tommy played with Andy, he'd ask, can I ride the bike now? And every time Andy would say, nope. Tommy usually just left it at that. He pretended he was okay. But secretly, he was planning something. He was planning to steal and his bike. Not a good thing to do. So one night, under a full moon, so that there was a bit of light, it wasn't completely dark, Tommy snuck out of bed and out of his house. He ran over to Andy's house and stole Andy's dirt bike. Now, he knew better than to bring it home with him. After all, police might come and they would look around, so he couldn't bring it home. They'd find it there. So instead, he rode into the woodlands, found his favorite spot there, and covered it with leaves and some branches. And then he ran back home to bed. But he was so excited at what he could, had done, and he could hardly wait till the next day when he'd be able to ride that dirt bike on his own. Wow! that he had trouble sleeping. When morning came, he got up, jumped out of bed. It was time to get up. He wasn't tired. The sooner he'd get going, the sooner he'd get to school, the sooner he'd get home, the sooner he'd go on the bike. On his way downstairs, he overheard his parents talking. And they were talking on the phone with someone, he wasn't sure who. And from the top, from what the, Tommy overheard they were planning to buy a dirt bike for him for his birthday. Wow, he thought, even better. I have two dirt bikes. Or maybe I'll take Andy's back and say I found it. And he'd be so happy and then we could go riding together. Well, he went on downstairs and of course, when his parents saw him, they said, goodbye, hung up and said, Oh, your grandparents called just to say hi. Nothing was said about dirt bike. Nothing was said about his birthday. Tommy is fine with that. He grinned, left for school. Andy wasn't there. Andy didn't show up that day. Tommy came home from school. The police were there. 
You wouldn't find the bite. It wasn't there. So were Andy and his parents. Oops. So was the dirt bike. Darn it, Tommy exclaimed to himself. I forgot that Andy knew my special spot in the woodlands. We found it together. Oh, well, they found it. So at least we'll be able to go riding together when I get my new bike for my birthday. Well, Andy and his parents left not too long after. They left with the bike and without even saying a word to Tommy. The police talked to Tommy for a few moments too. He really wasn't listening. He was thinking about his own dirt bike that he was going to get and what he could do with it. He just nodded when it seemed that he was, they expected him to nod and shook his head when it seemed they expected him to shake his head. They hadn't really heard them. They left. Tommy's father spoke. He would never to see Andy again or go near his home. But Andy's my best friend, Tommy exclaimed. And you stole your best friend's bike and expect him to just pretend you didn't? His mother asked. Well, it was his fault because he wouldn't let me ride it, Tommy answered. He doesn't want to see you again. His parents don't want him hanging around with a thief, his father repeated. That's okay. He'll forgive me when I get my own dirt bike. Really? When do you think that will happen? Oh, not that long. My birthday's next week. So? Well, I overheard you talking with Grandma and Grandpa this morning. I know you're giving me a dirt bike for my birthday, Tommy confessed. We were, Tommy's mother told him. But not now. You're obviously not mature enough for a dirt bike. You're grounded for the rest of the term. You'll come home every day after school. We're going to pick you up, bring you right home. No more sports. You're off all the teams you were on. No more after school activities. You have chores to do. And you'll have to earn and save your own money to buy the bike. But that'll take forever, perhaps, his father said. And perhaps you'll learn that you can't always get what you want when you want it. You don't have the right to steal from others. We love you, his mother jumped in, but we want you to be the best you can be. And that doesn't mean the best thief you can be. Off to your room, we'll call you when supper is ready. Tommy wanted to say something. He wanted to complain, but the look on his father's face stopped him. So he gave a slight nod and went up to his room. Hmm. Do you think Tommy really, really understood what was going on and why he was being punished? Somehow, I don't think he did. But I hope he learned something, and I hope you do. You see, sometimes we want things. We want things right away on our timetable. And sometimes God is okay with whatever it is we want but he wants it on his timetable. And we try to force the issue, force God to act the way we want him to act and act when we want him to act. God doesn't work like that. But sometimes he'll give in and do what you ask him. you do what you tell him to do. But there's usually a trick of, of some kind. We discover that what we wanted really wasn't that great. Or maybe... We really didn't want it after all. When we force God to act on our timetable, we're a little bit like Tommy. We cheat ourselves of the blessings and gifts that God was going to give us, and we'll settle for something less. I hope Tommy learned his lesson, and I hope that one day Tommy and Andy will be able to get together again, but it probably won't be for a few years. But their friendship, I'm not so sure about it. With us and God, that I'm sure of. If we're ready 
to make up, to sort of say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. God's there to listen to us. He wants us to be the best we can be. Sometimes we have to learn patience. And that's always hard. So let's pray. Dear God, I want so many things. I can't afford them. I want things right now so I can enjoy them and maybe show them off. But I don't get them. For some reason you say no. God, help me to understand why. Help me to be patient. Help me to remember you will fill my life with all sorts of blessings. Things I haven't even thought of or asked for. But sometimes I have to wait. God, help me to trust you. To walk with you every day. And to look for your, your blessings. I ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, and thank you for joining us for this week's Children's Time. Take care, God bless, and see you next week. Bye-bye.